Everyone, welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. When my guest today agreed to be on the show, I was so excited. I've been uh, a fan of this person's creating for quite some time with books like Stepping Stones and Apple Crush, as well as uh, Kid Gloves and a nice amount of creating in the world of visual travel logs as well. Uh, and I, I'm delighted to be talking with author and artist Lucy Nisley today. Lucy, thank you for joining. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's absolutely my pleasure. My pleasure. I am a former middle grades teacher, current English teacher. I've done the literacy professor thing and have shared your books widely across audiences. And I, I just have to tell you, I love that part, especially at the end of Stepping Stones, where you get to like the last few pages and it's like, oh, here are pictures and this story that's inspired this book. So I, I just absolutely love that personal inspiration that you bring to your work. Thank you. Um, I've always really loved the sort of juxtaposition between comics and photos that you can sort of see it from this very subjective point of view and then a very objective point of view. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I've always liked to use photograph photography in my work a little bit. Cool, cool. Very Alice and Bechtel of you. Very Bechtel of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so what drew you to comics and visual storytelling as, as sort of the space you wanted to tell your stories? Well, my father was an English professor. Um, he's a dean now. He's in uh, the, the other side of it. But um, for years, he was an English professor, and he's always been very attached to the written word and storytelling. And um, my mother is a visual artist and a chef. And so I felt like these two forces early on in my life kind of acting upon me in the storytelling fashion my father um, believed that comics were a little lowbrow and my mother believed that comics were kind of sexist. So uh, <laughs> comics became a little bit of a rebellion where I had to really convince them that it was this combination of uh, literary storytelling and artistic storytelling. And for me, that's always been this combination of these two loves that they both instilled in me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I love how your work kind of moves beyond like it's difficult to to say comics haven't been sexist in some way in the way that you know female characters have been presented and things like that but but great to see comics on the market now that are a little more diverse in that regard definitely it's, it's huge changes just within my lifetime Yes. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, I always have that moment where I'm about to post kind of an interview with someone and I'm like, can I use this cover? Should I use this? Should I promote this image? Um, so, yeah. Um, but but I love it when rebellion also turns into positive outcomes, which it so often does. It so often does. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Um so thinking particularly about the books that you have for young readers, because uh, work like Kick Gloves is, is more kind of young adult or adult oriented. Um, what do you hope that readers take away from your work? Well, um, I suppose some of the things I am proudest of in my work for middle grade readers is the same stuff that would get me banned in certain places. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I uh, I was very proud to be able to illustrate uh, mental turmoil, anxiety, things that kids grapple with in middle school where they are really struggling to find their place in the world and understand what's going on between their mind and their experiences. And mm -hmm. uh, the character Jen from my middle grade series is very clearly based on my own experiences and me and uh, struggles with uh, dyscalculia and has a lot of anxiety about math and about um, academics. And that was something that I really wanted to show as sort of just a facet of something that a lot of kids deal with in terms of feeling really out of control of their environment, of feeling like uh, they're coming into their own as an individual, but still have so little agency in what happens to their life and what they're able to focus their attentions on. So mm -hmm. for me, that's always been a really key part of telling these stories because that was a really key part of middle school for me. And I wanted yeah. that relatability in my readership. 
Yeah, I, lo I love that. And um, what you were saying there about um, those topics being potentially controversial or banned in some way, I just have to say, uh, those are such huge and important topics, mental health and anxiety and finding my place in the world and maybe not always being uh, necessarily good at something. I, I was also, I had a lot of anxiety about math growing up and still do from time to time. So those are huge conversations to have. Year, <laughs> anxiety about math that comes back. <laughs> yes, yeah, and yeah. uh, flashing back to statistics. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so I also typically ask about those times that you connect with the reader. I know that lots of authors do school visits, or they receive author mail or emails or things like that. So, uh, any particular moment that you've connected with a reader in kind of an interesting or surprising way, and also recognizing that could be someone who's young, but it could also be um, someone who's older because your work is really uh, all ages in, in so many ways. Thank you. Um... <laughs> About three years ago, we moved to uh, Evanston, Illinois, which is kind of this little city suburb milieu kind of area. And uh, I went from living in a city where I didn't know many of my neighbors to suddenly having tons of neighbors. And uh, I have a seven-year-old kid. And so we moved to a part of the town that has a ton of kids. And suddenly I had um, like... 16 little girl neighbors <laughs> in my life and uh it was so fun for me because I was working right in that age range and I got to ask them about what they were reading and what they liked to read and the sort of books that really drew them and I suddenly had this great little um sort of think tank <laughs> for me to work from and uh and now I have these early readers for a lot of my work I get to um I get to give them like early copies of the things that I write and it's so fun for me and it's it's been really rewarding to get to see them respond to it and to hear back about it and sneak them into background scenes and things like that um so I think uh, one of my favorite parts about the last middle grade book I put out I gave them a, a really early just printout uh arc of this book an advanced reader's copy of this book it was just in like a binder and it was so early that like the, the publisher hadn't seen these pages yet. Like it was really, really early on. And I uh, gave it to our next door neighbor girls and was like, okay, well, here's, here's this, let me know what you think, but you have to give it back to me because I'm not allowed to show, I'm not like contractually supposed to show this to anybody. And then they just didn't give it back <laughs> <laughs> to the point where I had to ask for it, where I was like, Hey, I still got that thing. And they were like, um, yeah, yeah, I thought you were going to give it to us. And they were really <laughs> to return it, which is very validating to me. I was like, oh, okay, yes. that's good. That's what I want. That's exactly the response I was hoping for. <laughs> That, that is the best review. I mean, uh, right? as an English teacher, if a, if a kid won't give a book back, that is... That's high praise. Absolutely. A friend of mine works at the local library here, and she's like, your books get stolen all the time. And I'm like, well, thank you for telling me that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a huge compliment. Right? Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to ask about what led you to graphic novels. I don't know if we kind of tapped into that with um, talking about your, your parents, but um, we can go after that question if there's something to add there as well as kind of the process of doing a graphic novel because from what I understand it's arduous and uh, kind of a, a long journey. It is. I wish it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I, I, I get slower every year. I wish that wasn't the case um, but you know it's something that uh, you you gain uh, confidence at uh, You've, you've done a graphic novel, you know you can do it again, but just physically, like my body can't keep up with how fast I want to make these books. And so it takes a while. You have to, in my case, write a script and edit through the script. And then it goes to uh, like sort of thumbnails or sketches. And then it goes to the inking and then the coloring process. And the editing is sort of happen happening throughout. And then the printing itself takes a year. So yeah, it's um this is another thing that my my neighbor think tank is always like, why aren't you why don't you have more books for us? It's like I'm sorry, I'm working as fast as I can. Yeah, yeah. Good to have a, a neighborhood think tank. 
it is. get to have. Yeah. yeah. At least I'm not an animator. I feel like that's the one thing that like would take more. It's <laughs> 27 drawings per second or something oh, like yeah. that. At least I'm not an animator. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine. I can't right. even imagine. Um, so by means of a, a final official question, and then we can, of course, hit anything that we've missed. Um, spaces where people can learn more about your work, but then also anything creatively that you're currently circling that you can talk about or hat tip or give a nod to. I think I read that you have maybe is it a picture book that's out next month? Is that right? Yeah, next month mm -hmm. I have a book called uh, Ride Beside Me that is right here. Um, very with, nice, very nice. Um, about going on bike rides and community cycling and uh, different ways that you can ride a bike and different kinds of bikes. And it's a sort of a poem story told in rhyme uh, about <laughs> riding bikes. And it's something that I do with my own kid. And so I wanted to explore that and I also had to during the pandemic draw my last graphic novel entirely on my screen <laughs> because oh, I yes, can't yeah. the art store anymore and I'm very fussy about my materials and I, I like pencil on paper and the first book had all been drawn pencil on paper and um so having to go purely digital for the last one I was like swinging back in the opposite direction and this entire book is painted in gouache. Oh, love it. Love it. <laughs> As like a reaction to that, where I was like, okay, now I have to. <laughs> um, so it's uh it's 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 nice. It's a very slow and and contemplative and meditative, hopefully, and like a nice bedtime story book. Uh and then I have a collection of comics coming out in the summer in July. Uh that's a collection of comics about my cat. So nice. I have two books coming out this year, so I'll be touring around. And if you want to come and meet me and get books signed, I'll be posting my tour stop soon on my website, which is just my name.com, lucydnisley.com. But my last name has got a silent K. It is kind of hard to remember. So you can also go to stoppayingattention.com, oh, <laughs> which nice, will be nice. my place. Awesome, awesome. Well, I'll make sure to link the the website in the video and audio on this and looking forward to seeing your work in picture books. I hope that there's more on the horizon of, of that kind of work as well from you. I am work. I'm putting together some art for another one now in, oh, awesome. in also drawing the next stepping stones book. So yes, hopefully there'll be more in the future. Fantastic. Well, well Lucy, thank you so much for the time. Did we miss anything that you want to make sure to share? Um, Not really. I suppose I really liked your question about, what I wanted readers to take away from my books. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, as a teacher, I wanted to mention that uh, there's a lot in the middle grade series that I have that is trying to honor teachers and librarians and mm -hmm. uh, give credit to these people that offer a safe space and an encouraging word to kids that are dealing with anxiety or struggling with um, academic uncertainty and for me including little moments where Jen feels supported by her librarian at her school or her teacher or her friend is um, is something that I also really want kids to notice and to take away from when they read the books so I wanted to thank you for <laughs> for offering that I hope oh yes yeah 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 that's what <laughs> what we strive for absolutely Absolutely. Safe spaces, uh, support, and just being a decent human. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. Learning, learning differences and, uh, you know, the, the different ways that kids process things. I was, I'm a, a doodler and so is my kid. And I'm currently in meetings at schools where they're like, how do we get your kid to, to focus and not doodle? And I'm like, well, if you can <laughs> tell me that <laughs> after nearly 40 years of my life of, um, trying to not doodle when people are talking to me, uh, please do let me know yes. because I've made an entire career out of this now. <laughs> yes. And as a, as a hint to educators out there, doodling can be a focusing strategy. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm the kind of teacher who will be drawing the character up on the board. A couple of my students did a closing TikTok about my class last week as an assignment. And one of the things they said was, you know, it's Dr. D's class because he's going to draw every character and everybody. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I praise. Oh. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, I appreciate the the partnership between authors like yourself, creators like yourself, and educators, because uh, I could not possibly tell all the stories that my students need to read. So I, I appreciate taking voices to the classroom, and uh, it's, it's great work and great partnership. So uh, thank you for that, as well as for the time. Excellent. Thank you.